Sonic the Hedgehog is an IP that is approximately 30 years old. It has grossed billions of dollars through the consumption of its over 66 games, half a dozen TV shows, movies, shorts, crossovers, and tons of merchandise. With the arrival of the Sonic the Hedgehog live action movie, the Sonic IP is getting a boost. A boost that it hasn't seen since the height of its popularity during its debut in the 90s. With this new cinematic adventure, to complement the decades-long Sonic lore, it may be relevant to discuss what we know about our favorite characters. If you're having problems identifying a favorite character or thinking about what you know about these characters, you're not alone. Now ask yourself, who is Sonic? And no, I don't mean he's fast and he's a blue hedgehog with a tood. I really want to know who is Sonic? Like, what does he do? Where is he from? Who is his family? What's his full name? You know, Sonic. Remember him? Sonic? What about this character? Can you answer those questions for this one? If you haven't already noticed, there is a real problem when it comes to the Sonic franchise. It has no point. Over the past 30 years, the Sonic IP has been in steady decline due primarily to a lack of continuity in the franchise, resulting in a slew of poor quality games and lackluster reimaginings. Over the decades, and in particular the last decade of the franchise, the characters of Sonic have had no real development, and in every new iteration they appear as caricatures of themselves. The old fandom are losing a hold on what makes Sonic so great, and the new fandom certainly must be having trouble putting together what makes Sonic Sonic in the first place, like what he does and what his story is about. I've been in love with the Sonic franchise for nearly my entire life. If you were to ask me in the 90s and 2000s what Sonic the Hedgehog was about, I would clearly be able to say. Sonic is a hedgehog. He lives on Mobius. He's a freedom fighter. He tries to stop Dr. Robotnik from roboticizing the entire world and taking over it, along with a group of other freedom fighters, friends, and loved ones. In the 90s, I was able to articulate what Sonic is due to very consistent narratives depicting Sonic in his games and in television that reinforce who Sonic and friends are. Knuckles? He can glide. He can dig. He's the solitary guardian of the Master Emerald. Tails? He's the younger protege and best friend of Sonic. And he flies planes and builds things. And he can also fly with strange dual foxtail physics. He's a freedom fighter as well. I can barely name some of these character traits anymore. The last decade or so of Sonic Media has contributed little to nothing to this formally common knowledge or continuity and replaced it with not continuity between properties. What about these? What do any of these games and animations have to do with one another, besides the characters' names and models. The problem with the Sonic franchise is that because they can't seem to nail down one plot, setting, or consistent world building, it makes it hard to get invested in the series. All you then have to go on is the individual merits of each game. There are some great games in Sonic, like Sonic Mania, and there are some really, really not great games as well. And there are some good reasons for that. However, for a point of comparison on what basic story elements and world building does for a series, let's look at Sonic's ultimate rival, not Knuckles, I mean Mario, Mario and his franchise. Sonic was created as an alternative and fast-moving competitor to Mario whose franchise in contrast to Sonic's has remained consistent in practically all of its media incarnations. Mario is the Italian-American plumber whose brother and himself live in and protect the Mushroom Kingdom and Princess Peach from Bowser and Minions and other baddies from faraway lands. When they have spinoffs 
It's because Mario and the gang are on vacation or having a game night in the Mushroom Kingdom. However, Sonic's continuity changes drastically with each iteration with basically no through line. In a property that was far more story driven than Mario due to a very successful comic book series and multiple cartoon iterations, Sonic has unfortunately allowed Mario to take the lead in that regard. The Mario franchise is far more consistent in its world building and storytelling. When there is something happening in the Mario world, you actually feel like there are stakes in the matter because you know where you are and who's being affected by the thing that's happening. Look at these two scenes from very recent Mario and Sonic games. It looks like there's more going on in the Sonic scene, but the reason why I care more about the Mario scene and what's happening in that scene is because I know so much more about Mario and Peach and Bowser in the Mushroom Kingdom that Bowser's attack on Peach means something to me. In the Sonic scene, I don't know where they are, I don't know who's being affected by this, and even though there's destruction happening, I don't know what the status quo was like before Dr. Robotnik attacked, so I don't really know why I should care about all the destruction happening. And even though Sonic's getting hurt, this is his game. I know he's going to be fine. There aren't very many stakes here. The lack of continuity has led to a number of relatively bad Sonic games, in-game plot lines, and dialogue, and TV shows. What does Sonic the Black Knight have anything to do with Sonic Unleashed? Or Sonic Boom? Or Sonic Colors? In what universe do they all exist? Now, this lack of continuity kind of began in the early 2000s, but was exasperated by lawsuits initiated by Ken Penders in 2009, a writer who contributed greatly to the Sonic Archie comics. Essentially, his separation from the Archie comics and the Sega universe took with him a number of Sonic characters and plot lines. This eventually led to the cancellation of the Sonic the Hedgehog Archie comics in 2017, which wasn't keeping up with the new restrictions. The Sonic Archie comics was the driving force behind much of the television shows and video games. And rightly so, what would most superhero franchises be without the continuity of the comics to drive the series and keep it grounded? So now without a clear plot, Sonic and his friends aren't real characters, but caricatures of themselves living in a generic green other world with Robotnik who sometimes tries to kill Sonic with robots for some reason. I don't know, he doesn't like them. I guess to take over the world, world domination. But then again, what is world domination in a world that has no citizens? I mean, seriously, every Sonic world is so devoid of characters. Most of the Sonic's more recent games and cutscenes look like they were shot on FaceTime with barely enough room in frame to show more than one character at a time. I suppose that's why it has been a trend in the Sonic franchise or Sonic Adventure into the real world to save the day since Earth is actually populated, unlike his homeworld with no name. Yet I digress. So, the question is, how does this get fixed? How do we put continuity back into the Sonic franchise? How do we make the world lived in? How do we create stakes that we care about? I believe that the only option is to reboot the entire Sonic the Hedgehog in-game universe. Yes, this means recreating the origins of a number of characters, but honestly, anyone who wasn't around in the 90s and early 2000s doesn't know them in the first place. The Sonic franchise needs a series, just a singular series of maybe three games that reestablishes who Sonic is in his own world. Sonic can still be a freedom fighter. Knuckles can still guard the Master Emerald and Tails can still tinker, but create a story where they all meet and create a singular continuity. The same way that Sonic, Sonic 2, and Sonic and & Knuckles did on the Sega Genesis. We need a story with names of people and places. If you can't legally call Sonic's world Mobius, then call it something else. Blobius. Blurth. Anything is better than the awkward dialogue of every other character and villain threatening the world and the planet. Who actually talks like this? We say Earth. Earth is affected by global warming. Earth is 
getting hotter every day because of the sun. It isn't that hard. Make Eggman be the villain, but make him have a real reason for hating Sonic and wanting to rule the world, which not only means Eggman has a motive, but that the things that he wants have value and meaning. What makes Mobius, or whatever name you want to give the Sonic world, worth taking over? And why do I care as a viewer? It had to be populated with towns and cities and characters that need protecting, like good old uncle, let's call him Buck, Sonic's loving uncle, or Cindy Walnut, Sonic's love interest, and this character, and that one, etc., etc. Maybe there's a king character or a mayor that has charged Sonic with saving the world from Eggman. The world needs Sonic's world to feel lived in, like the Mario world feels lived in, with its Toads and Yoshis and Koopas all over the place from all different walks of life and different names and shapes and sizes. What is the point of stopping Robotnik from destroying an empty world? As far as the gameplay goes, numbers don't lie when it comes to what people like about Sonic games. We all want modern, yet classic, at the same time. We know which of the newer Sonic games have really worked. Add this to an intriguing story that teaches us about Sonic and his actual world and what he really is fighting for. And the Sonic characters are no longer caricatures of themselves that need rebooting every other year. Less is definitely more. Mario went to space too, but he went right back home after that to visit very familiar narratives. Going bigger with different dimensions and aliens doesn't distract from a story with no real stakes or world building. With the 2020 Sonic the Hedgehog movie hitting theaters, there is a strong possibility that interest in the Sonic universe will be peaked once again. Hopefully, Sega will seize this opportunity and create something more than just a one-time cash grab and turn the Sonic franchise into something memorable, something that fans can sink their teeth into. I saw the movie. It was a decent kids movie, honestly. It was fun, but still suffers from some of the same problems that the games do. Sonic is sent to Earth essentially because there are no stakes in the basically empty and nameless world where he comes from. But in the next movie, they have a big opportunity to do something honest to goodness, something good, something world building. Sonic's character is different in the movie, kinda, but they haven't gone off the rails yet with giant monsters and spaceships. In fact, the only real criticism that I have besides having the same emotional plot of the first live action Chipmunks movie was the fact that it used the Quicksilver time-stopping speed thing. It just creates a lot of plot holes. And it's been done before. I really hope this is the year of the beginning of something really great for the Sonic franchise. I absolutely love Sonic in all truthfulness. I played Sonic everything growing up. I read the comics, I fan-fictioned with the best of them, you couldn't tell me that Maverick the Hedgehog wasn't the offspring of Sally and Sonic. I will buy any Sonic game out there that's worth playing, and that's a fun time. I just think the franchise can do much better at marketing and storytelling and creating something that feels cohesive. I'm concerned primarily because even if Sonic never leaves us, a new franchise, a better franchise may take its place. And that will truly be a sad day, for only time will tell how far nostalgia of Sonic's greatness alone can take this series.